Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.2.1 to the public. iOS 17.2.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're not a beta tester. If you are a beta tester or developer, you won't have this update as you're actually on a newer version with iOS 17.3 beta 1. Apple did release some other updates as well with this, but not as many as we would have expected. They released macOS 14.2.1 and iOS 16.7.4 and iPadOS 16.7.4. There is no iPadOS 17.2.1 and no watchOS update either or tvOS or HomePod updates. This is a bit odd because we thought we'd get the update to the watch first, but we didn't. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now this update came in at a pretty small 240.5 megabytes that's on a 15 Pro Max, was about the same size on most of the devices, however my iPhone 13 Pro Max actually had a 1 gigabyte size update, so it was on the same version of 17.2 before. Now as far as the overall build number, let's take a look at that and we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21C66 and that just lets you know you're on the latest version matching everyone else if you have the same build number. And it says this update provides important bug fixes and is recommended for all users. And then they have security updates as well on their website we'll take a look at a little bit later. Now there is no modem update in this version and I do wish Apple would give more information as to what they've actually fixed. However, iOS 16.7.4 may hint at some of that, as their notes actually say this update fixes an issue where built-in Apple apps that have been deleted may not reinstall. This could have been an issue not only on iOS 16.7.4, but iOS 17.2, iPadOS 17.2, but apparently it may only affect certain devices. However, I think they may have fixed a couple other things to do with performance and more. But I did test out a couple different things, such as the Wi-Fi bug. Now, most people say that was fixed with iOS 17.2, but they could have been refining that. But the wallpaper fading bug is still there, so if we bring this down here, you'll see if I swipe up. It fades in the background. Give it a second and it fades. You'll see that and it just fades down. So that's something I would like to see fixed in the future. Also the notification bug is still there. You'll see it just jumps around and is still an issue. So definitely some problems there as far as the overall bugs that still remain. However, the keyboard bug seems to be fixed for most iOS 17.2 resolved that, but some people were still experiencing it, and it seems to come up every time I go into Spotlight Search or maybe a website. Now, I am hopeful that Apple will resolve any battery issues that people are still experiencing with iOS 17.2, and they may have done that with this update, but they haven't mentioned it. We'll take a look at battery a little bit more in just a moment. But as far as today's updates, I was a bit surprised we didn't have watchOS 10.2.1. Apple is actually working on an update, they've said publicly, to help resolve the issue where they have to halt sales of the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2 in the United States. That's due to a patent dispute or patent issue with the oxygen sensor on those watches. So whether or not they can fix those with a software update, hopefully they're not disabling it, as I wouldn't want to update necessarily, but hopefully they'll fix that maybe with a software workaround or something else, but that's kind of up in the air. They'll still service the Apple Watches in the U.S., and you should be able to buy them outside the U.S., just not within the United States. So we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. Now, as far as other announcements, before we talk about security updates, there were a couple things. Apple announced today that The Athletic joins Apple News Plus, if you use Apple News Plus, and they updated self-service repair the other day, as well as spotlighting some of the top apps and games of 2023. Lots of different lists here, such as top free iPhone games with Monopoly Go, Roblox, and Royal Match, top paid iPhone games, top free iPad apps, and much more. I'll link this in the description if you haven't checked it out, and I did mention a couple of these in yesterday's news update as well. Now, as far as security updates, let's take a look at Apple's security release website. And if we scroll down here, you'll see iOS 17.2.1 and also iOS 16.7.4 and iPadOS 16.7.4. It actually says this update has no published CVE entries. That doesn't mean there's no updates, there's just no updates they're telling us about. So as far as security updates, there could be some in here, but sometimes they'll update this later on as they don't want to tell anyone right ahead of what they just released and kind of give people time to install this, get this taken care of, and hopefully it has some good updates there. But I'm very surprised we don't have a rapid security release at this point where they were pushing those out with rapid security responses in the past and sort of just stopped that. Maybe we'll have to wait until iOS 18 for that. Now, as far as performance, that's where I was most impressed after installing this update. 
given that it's a small update, everything was super smooth. And I've heard from others right away that they noticed that performance seemed to be much better. And to go along with that, it seems to be staying nice and cool. You can see how fast ProMotion ramps up there. Things feel super fast already. And this is just going in and using it initially waiting for Wi-Fi there. You'll see if we scroll down, everything just loads quickly. And I've been pretty impressed with it so far as well as the thermals as it hasn't even heated up at all. It's nice and cool to the touch in my hands. And typically it has to process more in the background right after updating. So if we take a look at this as well as this is iOS 17.3 beta one on a 14 pro max, let's take a look at that. And at the hottest point of the phone, we're only about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the 17.3 beta one, we're around 80 as well on the 15 pro max, you'll see about 29.5 degrees Celsius and on the 14 pro max about 28 degrees Celsius. So in general, pretty good. No complaints there. Again, it's nice and cool, especially right after installing an update. As far as the battery life, let's take a look at that. Now I can only show you the betas and what we've been running on, but most people are getting through the day, but there are some people with some issues here. So if we go into 17.3 beta one that I have on my iPhone 15 pro max here, we'll go into that and let's switch over to dark mode here and take a look. So we'll go to battery, battery health and charging. I'm at 100%. And I have to say with the beta, it hasn't been great. So yesterday was five hours and 46 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 57 minutes of screen idle time. And I used about hundred percent of my battery. People using iOS 17.2 I've seen were using far less. And let me show you that. And others were experiencing six hours and 43 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 44 minutes of screen idle time and use 75% of their battery. So in general, I would say the public version seems to be a little bit better. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2.1, well, at this point, I would say, why not? It seems to be performing quite well. It has security updates, bug fixes, and there's really no reason to do that. If you're on iOS 17.3 beta one, I would just hold off until the new year for the next updates. As iOS 17.3 beta two is expected probably around the second week of January. That's typically what Apple does, but we haven't had a release this late in the year, like today, since maybe many years ago. So at this point we could see a different release schedule, but it seems likely the second week of January is when we'll see that with iOS 17.3 releasing to the public, usually toward the end of January, maybe around the 22nd or 29th. So we'll have to wait and see what Apple does there, but typically they're on holiday vacation for Christmas and new year's as well. Now, as far as the benchmarks, let's take a look at those as that's probably the most impressive thing I saw right after installing an update on this one, we have 2,973 for single core, 7,390 for multi-core that's right after installing it and running it. And if we take a look at the history, you'll see it bumped up quite a bit from the previous version. That's iOS 17.2, where we're significantly more as far as the multi-core about 400 more and single core is similar, but again, higher as well, about 50 higher. So still it's doing much better, especially since I just installed this. So I'm pretty impressed with that so far. So that's pretty much everything with iOS 17.2.1, a minor update, but definitely one I would recommend at this point. Let me know your experience so far with it in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.